always loved about strength. It's like you can take away that focus, that obsessive focus that initially brought them there, right? Like mm-hmm. to, you know, change their body. But also too, like hormonally, like it everything's in such better balance when, you know, your strength is moving forward and you're doing everything correctly because you're getting adequate, you know, recovery as well. That has to be a part of the piece of the formula for everything to succeed. Well, to build muscle and to build strength, your body has to organize its hormones uh, in a way to do so. And so a balanced, youthful hormone profile does that. An unbalanced, uh, unhealthy hormone profile, good luck trying to get stronger as a man with really low testosterone and high cortisol, right? Like good, good luck trying to get stronger as a female where your estrogen or progesterone are off and your cortisol is really high. And you also have low testosterone. Testosterone is important to women as well. Welcome back. It's Mind Pump time. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS Symmetry, the newest MAPS program. Super popular. Help balance out the body. We're going to give this away for free, but you got to do the following to win Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and click on notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Symmetry. Also, uh, we got a big promotion going on this month. It's summertime. So we've got two fat burning promotions going on right now. One is a bundle, meaning it's multiple workout programs. So here's what it is. It's the Shredded Summer Bundle. This includes Maps Aesthetic, Maps Hit, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So all that together, 50% off. And then we have the individual program, Maps Hit, also 50% off. So you can do either a bundle or just one program, your choice, or both. If you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JUNE50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. The best metric that'll tell you if you're on the right track with your training and diet is strength. It's really hard to have a bad diet, bad training program, and have your strength increase. Ooh. Yeah. I like this one because it's not obviously perfect. Uh, no, because when you're brand new, it's it, you can see strength gains even with a crappy diet. You, somewhat, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Yeah, but no. If, you're, if you newbie are- Newbie gains. Yeah. If you are eating terrible and don't even have a great training program, but you've never or haven't worked out in a very right. long time, almost anything yeah. you're going to see. That's why it's not perfect. That's one reason why it's not perfect, but- ultimately if you had to pick one metric like if i had a client and i saw consistent strength gains like it's hard yeah. to get stronger and be unhealthy right it's hard to get stronger and have terrible sleep and terrible exercise programming well and also you're not going to have perpetual strength like it's not this linear thing that's always going to be progressing right. so you have to kind of look at other variables uh to bring in to focus on too but it's definitely the 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 least so it's the most objective and the least subjective yes and it's it usually means Usually, not always, but usually that you're doing most things right. You know, yeah. like if, like, I mean, I'll give you guys a scenario. Yeah, everything has to stack up. Yeah, I'll give you guys a scenario. You got a client trying to lose weight. They're on a, you're, you're putting them on a calorie deficit and their strength is going up in the gym. You're like, we are doing great. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, they're trying to do correctional exercise and their strength goes up. Or they come to hire you for pain management and their strength goes up. Like, you name it. If you see strength gains going up, it's one of the best signs you could possibly see. Like when I would see that uh, and when I would, cause I would track their workouts and I'd say, okay, you did three more reps or you added 10 pounds and your form got better. I knew that for the most part, we're probably on track. We're doing pretty damn good. And I, I like it. I like measuring strength. Like anytime somebody asks me a question about their exercise programming diets, one of the first questions I ask is why are you getting stronger? Have you, how's your strength feel? That being said, the only anomaly is really the the person that I can think of is the person that I was ta- talking about, right? The yeah. brand new person who's lifting. Uh, who, how long would you say that lasts for somebody, right? Like you have a shitty diet. You're not really, you don't have the best training program. You're following some generic thing you found online or some gimmicky, uh, you know, weight loss program, whatever that you found. Uh, how long do you think you get away with seeing gains and results from that before that really? Strength wise? Yeah. Boy, depending on how bad the diet and the training program is, I'd say between one to six months. I'd say after six months, it'd be pretty rare. Yeah, I'd say even sooner than that. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, it'd be really hard, right? And I say one month, as little as one month, because it's, if it's really bad programming, then you'll start to you'll see the strength go up a little bit and then even start to come down. Mm-hmm. Like if they're just constantly doing too much and eating too little type of deal. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say like one to three months. Yeah. I'm trying to recall like clients where I've got them. And th- typically that's when we would get them is after they had already done their own thing, right? Yes. Like, so that was common. Like I get somebody who was like, I was doing this and that. And it was working so good for me. Mm-hmm. And then this happened and now I'm not seeing any results. Therefore I'm here. And then I get them and they've already crash dieted like crazy. Yep. They've already been training 
seven days a week, high intensity yeah, circuit. I'll, I'll give you training. guys an example, like why, mm -hmm. why this came to me. I was uh, um, hanging out with my family this weekend and my sister, who there's four of us siblings, okay? And she has probably some of the best muscle building genetics out of all of us, but she never really likes to train too much or whatever. She's done other things, but whatever. She started training and she started training properly. She's hired a trainer and I know this trainer, so I know she's doing the right thing. And I hadn't seen her for, like I've been, I've been seeing her here and there because she'll come in here to work out, but I hadn't seen her dressed in normal clothes for like maybe two months. Um, and I saw her and I'm like, oh man, I could tell right away, right? And I told her, I said, you, I could tell you've been training properly. Like how much weight have you lost? She goes, actually the scale hasn't changed at all. I said, well, are you stronger? And she goes, yeah, I'm way stronger. I'm like, you built muscle and burn body fat for sure. Because the, and then Jessica, same thing, said the same thing. She goes, you look smaller, uh, but you probably built muscle and burn body fat. And it was a strength. She's like, oh, I'm way stronger yeah. on all my lifts. I'm like, well, if you're getting stronger, you're doing a lot Everything's, of things right. Yeah, moving the right direction. Now, how, impo now, how important do you think the mindset is that the, the client needs to have in this direction? Meaning, so on a, on a recent uh like back half call, right? When we we're answering live questions, I brought up what just happened the other night with Katrina and I. And one of the things I had noticed is she had been training very consistently since January. Right. Um, and she was asking me on, you know, okay, we got Cabo around the corner. How do I accelerate my results getting ready for that? And of course her initial, you know, should I start cutting calories? Should I start the cardio? Should I start mm -hmm. these things? And I, I, and I have intermittently seen her training. I haven't been, obviously haven't been with her every training session, but I've been kind of watching what she's doing. And, and I know when she's really getting after it. And I know when she's kind of going through the motions and training and I, I see the weight she's moving when she's squatting and deadlifting. And I've been with her and she's lifted way more weight before. And she looks great. She's had a great progress. But one of the things I said to keep the progress going or kick it back up is to really focus on strength. Yeah. And, and, and she's like, well, it's not, she's like, I'm following, you know, I think she was following anabolic right now. I'm following anabolic. So it's a strength based program. Like, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I said, yeah, but you're, you're kind of choosing the weights that you know you can do and kind of going through the motion, which is great. You know, that combined with you eating well has been, you know, over the course of this. Since that's a January. great long-term approach. Yeah, right? it, you've been progressing slowly, but you now you're asking me, hey, I got three three weeks. I really want to accelerate that. And your first initial thing is, hey, let's cut calories. Let's move more. And I go, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, actually, what I would do is like, let's get after the intensity and the mindset inside there. And like, you know, when Try was to last, lift more. Yeah, when was the last time you got back up to your old deadlift numbers and your old squatting numbers? Like, why don't you start progressing that way and pick up the intensity? And she's like, well, you're right. I really, I haven't pushed that I, at all. I like that for a few different reasons. One, when you build strength and build muscle, there's a lot of side effects that are favorable from that, right? You want to get leaner? Well, you build more muscle or you move in that direction. Your body learns to burn more calories, makes it easy. Um, two, your, it means you're doing things right. You're probably feeding yourself appropriately. It's objective weight loss and how you look in the mirror. Very subjective. Like how many times have you had a client? I, I've trained people for long periods of time. I know you guys have too. And they would complain about how bad they looked. Oh my God. I'm, I don't yeah. like the way I look. And then like 10 years later, they see a picture of themselves from 10 years prior. Like, wow, I look so good. And I always remind them, you know how bad you thought you looked yeah. 10 years ago. It's so subjective, but the number on the bar or the dumbbell that's objective. Well, that's why I always loved about strength. It's like you can take away that focus, that obsessive focus that initially brought them there, right? Like mm -hmm. to, you know, change their body. But also too, like hormonally, like it everything's in such better balance when, you know, your strength is moving forward and you're doing everything correctly because you're getting adequate, you know, recovery as well. That has to be a part of the piece of the formula for everything to succeed. Well, to build muscle and to build strength, your body has to organize its hormones uh, in a way to do so. And so a balanced, youthful hormone profile does that. An unbalanced, uh, unhealthy hormone profile, good luck trying to get stronger as a man with really low testosterone and high cortisol, right? Good, good luck trying to get stronger as a female where your estrogen or progesterone are off and your cortisol is really high. And you also have low testosterone. Testosterone is important in women as well. It's really hard, right? So yeah. if you see strength trending in the upward direction, and again, it's not perfect. Like if you've been working out for years and years, like I've been working out for, you know, three decades almost, I'm not going to see crazy strength gains anymore at this point. I think I've hit my peak and, you know, now I'm kind of maintaining. But especially in the first, five years yeah like it's got to be At one of the best that. yeah it's got to yeah. be one of the best metrics you could possibly and even now still if I, I see my strength waver but when i see it move up on the uptrend 
I know I'm kind of doing things right. You know? Well, it's also a great way to, again, it's not perfect, but it's also a great way to ensure that you hang on to as much muscle as you, you're you going into it. Like, right, we're going to go in summer, so I know a lot yeah. of questions are around getting lean. Yep. And most people want to get lean. The frenzy to cut down. But yeah. they also want to keep and maintain all the work that they put in either over winter or the last few months. Like in Katrina, that was like one of the things I challenged her when she was kind of arguing a little bit. Like, why we only have three weeks? Why wouldn't I start cutting calories and and yeah. pick up cardio? It's the last bit right now. I was like, well, do you want to keep all the muscle that you've worked hard for since January? Right. Well, one of the ways to ensure that is for us to still stay strength focused right now. Let's just pick up your intensity you, in the gym. You know, it's funny about that too. Mm -hmm. Speaking more specifically about Katrina, she's always very lean. Yeah, she's she walks around in the teens, which yeah. is lean for a, a woman. With when you're already lean, if you want to look better, oftentimes yeah. getting leaner doesn't do it. Gaining yeah. muscle does. Definition. Yes. Yeah. So you build like if, if you're a guy, for example, and you're you know eight percent, nine percent body fat, you probably would look better gaining three or four pounds of muscle than you would going down to seven percent or six percent body fat, right? And I know she knows this because she's seen her runner body and then she's seen her squatting, deadlifting body. Yeah. And it's night and day difference as yep. far as what it looks like. And so that's all I, that was all I needed to say to convince her to focus that way was, you know, do you want to keep on this muscle that you've, we've worked hard for? And she knows that she doesn't want to lose that because she knows that's what has given her that shape that she likes yeah. and desires. And so one of the ways that we can ensure that as we are getting closer to this time for her is that, you know, let's, let's stay strength focused right now and really push the intensity that way. Instead of doing what a lot of people want to do, which is the cut calories and intensity as far as movement and cardio goes, yeah. because that sends an off opposite signal to the body. And mm -hmm. what's more likely to happen is that she's sure she might lose a little bit more fat or lose weight on the scale, but the likelihood that she's going to keep all muscle is not very high. That's she's true. probably going to pare some of that down. That's right. And yeah. Speaking of which, I was just talking about my sister and everything. And I see her working out and I know my brother, what happens to him when he works out, man, I just, I it's really hard realizing I have the worst genetics. <laughs> I had the family. Out of all my siblings. <laughs> I think I'm the same way. I'm the one that too. I train the That's most. I'm so obsessed about dude, it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I think we're both like that. Dude, I, my, all my I was siblings. trying to grow, dude. Yeah. I was like doing everything I could to hang and to like stretch. Oh, you're trying and, to get tall? Yeah, bro. <laughs> My dad's six seven. My brother's six three, and I was like, "This sucks." Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I'm, I'm like, not my, short. My sister has long muscle bellies, like her calves, and she's got quads and hams. And I look at her triceps, and they end down here. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, "Man, you just start working out. What the <laughs> hell, dude? You know?" Yeah. And then my brother, you guys know my brother. He'll come in here and lift more weight than most guys yeah, are working out for you. And I'm like, geez, man, I got to work so hard, you know, to do this. I got the worst genetics. Yeah. Though, you know? But Justin's right, though. That's yeah. also what made you probably go down the rabbit hole, dude, of like having to try and figure everything out, right? Yeah, I know. So your, your greatest Yeah, that strength. was me. I was like, at least I can be stronger than both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be taller. I'll put you in your place, dude, your big-ass body. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Dude, did you guys, so what did you guys think of that study I sent you guys that showed that, and it just highlights just how powerful strength training and resistance training is. The study that showed that three seconds. Oh, yeah, it's fascinating. Three seconds of strength training uh, was enough to cause measurable strength gains in individuals. What do yeah, you guys think about it's that? It's almost hilarious. It's like, wow, that that little bit is going to move, you know, that much. Yeah, so what they did in the study, and it's, I mean, uh, look, if you had told me you were going to do the study, and then you had asked me, what do I think the results would be, I would have gotten pretty close. I think you guys would have, too. Now, I'd, now, by the way, this is not how you should always work out. I don't think this would work for forever at all. However, it highlights the power of strength training and just how effective it is at getting your body to adapt in positive ways. So in the study, they took individuals and they had them do different uh, types of muscle contractions uh, mm -hmm. at high intensity for three seconds. Yeah. I saw mainly bicep uh, uh, curls. That's what focus. they used, yeah. right? That's what they used. So they took, they, they took some people and they did an isometric hold for three seconds uh -huh. at maximal intensity. And they some did some eccentric with eccentric focus. With a, yeah, concentric, right, which is so curling up at high intensity. And then the other one was eccentric, yeah. okay? All of them saw strength gains that were measurable. The eccentric went 10%. Yeah. Three seconds. It was one rep of eccentric loading a day, and they got 10% increase in strength just from doing Now, what work. I don't remember in the study, did they, did they manipulate the weight and the tempo based on what 
what what if they were doing a concentric, eccentric, or it was maximizing maximal. intensity. Though it was maximal, load. so it wasn't like yeah. So what? It, I was, think like an, it was like a okay, really so what's hard it, load. So what's important yeah. to note for the audience then is yeah, that it was maximal effort. You can do four times the amount of load on the eccentric motion that you can on a concentric That's true. motion. So mm -hmm. you can lift way more. So keep that into consideration that they probably yeah. in the study used you know twenty five pound dumbbells for the concentric, right? So someone curled it up twenty five, and they probably used a hundred pounds right. to resist yeah. on the way down. So well, that's why you saw... Eccentric causes the most muscle damage, is the most responsible for muscle growth, but it's also the one that takes the longest to well, recover from. Yeah, but mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why is because you can load it, and it's yeah. also where you are... Normally, time under tension is longer yeah, on the eccentric Yeah, now the theory is... Too. The theory is with the sliding filament theory, and I don't know if this is... I don't know if they've changed this, but the, the way I learned it was, you know, muscle fibers <laughs> run next to each other, and they hook to each other like to contract. Mm -hmm. And when you're lengthening, those hooks have to break off, and that causes muscle damage. So it's a more damaging. Nonetheless, the point is, name any other form of exercise yeah, where that, you do three that's seconds that impactful, and you see a ten percent increase. Right, like a stretch. Now, do, did they anything? Did they repeat the, every single day? Like they did a, this daily, yeah, daily. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that also plays a factor. Yeah, and I mean, this really highlights uh, just again how powerful strength training. One of the reasons why I think it's such a valuable form of exercise is that the average person can do do, do two days a week. 45 minutes of strength training done properly. I mean, they're not going to yeah. get body, but they're not going to get ripped or anything like that from it. But most people want to be fit and healthy. And two days a week, 45 minutes for most people, you could do that for the rest of your life and did, reap incredible benefits. Did the study disclose uh, what type of people, like as far as beginners, novice, advanced? Are oh, they, I believe that they were. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to assume they were beginners. I should pull it up. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Because I actually think that... Um, I mean, I've told you guys this before in the podcast multiple times, and, and I feel like I continue to see this as as I age, that uh, these principles or is seems to be uh, um, compounding as I get older. Mm. So I, as I get older, and I've had more decades under my belt of lifting consistently, I feel that I have to do less work mm. to. To, to build or maintain muscle. Mm. You have a high muscle intelligence. Right. Yeah. That's what it that's it what sticks it, around. Yeah. It really does. I, I mean there's uh strength. So that's why I'm asking this because I'm wondering if this is newbies, I, I would I would wonder like would I get better, even better benefits? Because the intensity and the strength. Yes. Because I think about that. Like that's not a bad point. No, think about okay. When you were a 17 year old kid first starting to lift, and let's say you're in this study, you're yeah. brand new. You in in your head try and remember about what you were bicep curling back right. then and what would be or even just the force and the intensity yes the and the ability yeah. for you to control it to be able to focus on it. now you go in this study and the same rules apply for you but with the load that you can handle right now I would make the case that you could probably outperform the the people they're well, probably using in this study it causes more damage and right. all that stuff now in comparison to more appropriate traditional strength training obviously it's not going to okay so they were it. young sedentary individuals so well, is that the same one because what I read what I yeah, read Doug was yeah, Andrew's saying it is it is okay because I'm looking up right now it was a study in Japan and it was 39 college students so none of them worked out but they were they were young men yeah young sedentary individuals were yeah. assigned so so and I feel like that this I don't know how, I mean I don't think this would continue. But again, no. I, of again, course not. find me a form of exercise and even ten percent. Of course, it wouldn't. It wouldn't continue. But it just. I get it. It does. It highlights how in how powerful just a little bit of strength training. It also. You know. It also highlights. It also highlights the the studies and the these. Um, these training modalities, like the what's it called, the ART or the oh, they are super intense. Uh, yeah, 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 where where they pull from. To try and make the case very, that it's very good point. ARX. Yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. very careful. Do not extrapolate from this that what you need to do is one max out eccentric loaded exercise forever. For body You're part good. Five days a week. Yeah, they're going to use this study 100%. That's exactly what yeah. they do. And yeah. I, it's not this exact one maybe that they no, that use to, work. to prove that, but that's exactly yeah. the type of stuff that they'll pluck from and be like, oh, this is all I need to do now is do this. It's the biohack. Yes. Well, in fact, I remember we interviewed uh, Dave Asprey years ago. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He said he does 10 minutes all out once a yeah, day. Yeah, because he probably read a few studies like this. Because it is really impactful. Like, you don't have to do a whole lot. But at mm -hmm. the same time, again, some of those uh, benefits tend to, to taper. What off. I would love to see, though, is the, the point that I was trying to make with, you know, young Sal versus older Sal is like, you know, how much would that work for you at 17 versus how much would that work? Like, you know, it'd be interesting to say, like, let's pretend you completely cut out all the volume train, all the sets. How much would I keep? Yeah, how much would you be able? Where you where you're at right now, and that's all you did. You you know, how much would you be able to keep? I would think you would be able to keep more than the the newbie 
that would be able to make the games. Does that make sense? Yeah, what, I'm trying it does. To, what I'm trying to explain. It does. Yeah. I feel you like sh you should be able to. I feel like I could keep a majority of my gains now, not progress, but maintain a lot of them with like two full body workouts well, a week. Well, it's sort of I, I'm trying to think of how to compare this, but it's like general play GPP like is for kids, right? Like in oh. terms of like how you get exposed to like a multitude of of different types of stimulus like at first. So it's like more play focused and then you start kind of refining it. And so you're getting like, you know, uh, you know, more team sports focused, like you get more into weightlifting. Now you get really, you know, specified. That's not a bad point. If you teach, if you teach a kid how to ride a bike and they ride a bike for six months and then yeah. don't ride it for six years, they're going to get back well, on the bike and not remember much. But if you've been riding it for years and you stop for six there, years. Well, there's a lot of benefits that are unforeseen. Right. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of like the predictiveness of like, so if you get into another sport where you, you've, you've had exposure to a lot of different types of movements in another sport that will play itself into, you know, once you start uh, going in that like specific direction it, in comparison to somebody that was just sticking with one sport. Right. They get really good at those patterns and those sequences of what they're experiencing. But mm -hmm. but the unforeseen variables are not they're terrible. at. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're now obviously in this study, they're using something so basic and simple, like a bicep curl. Not right? not tons of, of skill involved. Right. I, you know exactly where you're going. Right. But the squat. Right. It's like and this is something that I noticed, like it took me uh, many, many years to get to a 225 squat. I mean, lots of years of yeah. consistent training just to get that. I could fall off the wagon for months right now, okay, of inconsistently training and still get under the barbell and easily do 225. Yeah. I mean, my muscles may be shaking and I'll get really sore from it. So, But, I mean, I could control that weight and feel, and then my legs respond yeah. right to that. Whereas I could have been training, there was years in my, in my career of lifting of training three, five days a week with legs in there and not be able to do that weight. Where now I can not train for months, get under the bar, do a set or two with 225, and instantly my legs respond to It that. is weird how muscle mm -hmm. hangs around yeah, in a particular for, way. For sure. Like I have family members that uh, were, you know, used to be mail carriers and they retired, you know, decades and they still have these really muscular looking calves. Yeah, they and they just go on. Males. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I, so it, it is very interesting, right? It's mm -hmm. like obviously nothing's permanent, but it is of all the adaptations that you get from exercise, it's the it's the one that tends to stick around. The longest, and then the side effects of it are so beneficial to all the things that people are after. But again, I, I can't think of anything else you could do for three seconds in a day and see a 10% increase. That's a big deal. That's a measurable improvement. Like, what else can you do for three seconds? Yeah. Like, run as hard as you can for three seconds. You're not going to see a 10% increase in no in stamina it's not gonna stick after around. three seconds. I mean, when I read some of that, it just made like, and you're in a perfect place because you're in such great shape right now. It'd be so fun. And obviously you would want to do this because you're not trying to lose uh, all your muscle that you've gained, but it would be really fun to see if like, you know, just picked a handful, like a squat, a yeah. deadlift, like a couple movements and you only do, you know, a couple minutes of it a day, just at a, you know maximal intensity like that. At how much could you hang on for? How long could you hang on to the the physique that you? I bet control? you because it's mm -hmm. novel, I might even gain it. First. I know that's what's <laughs> kind of different. You know, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see how much that you could you could hang on to by doing that. Yeah. I, t I'm telling you, I'm I'm so blown away by that right now at my age. I really yeah. I, like, how hard would it have been for you to maintain the amount of muscle and strength you have now in your 20s? Yeah, it was. Five to seven days a week. I wasn't even that big. And you had to push. It took me uh, until I was almost 30 before I saw, it was like, I think it was 27. I should say it was 27, I think, when I finally got over 200 pounds. Like me wow. shredded on stage at 3% is 203. You know, it would be hard you know for you to get, it would be hard for you to get below 200 pounds now if you tried. Oh, I, I don't think I could do it. I mean, I said, when I got, so when I showed up to nationals, some of the most, probably the best shredded physique that I had brought, it was sub 3%. I dunked at 3% two weeks out and continued to die. Mm -hmm. So I was sub 3% on that stage. I was 203. So that's, I, there's, there's no way I think I could get, yeah, low. That's a lot not of without, muscle. not without intentionally losing a bunch of muscle also. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. And, th and that was something that I worked my whole first 10 years of lifting to try and reach. Wow. And then now it just, it, it maintains like that. So there, I mean, there's. It's cool. It's really, and I didn't think about that. that that's not something that, and I and I, I like talking about on the show because I like to motivate the younger generation. Yeah. Like that should be. I wish someone would have like All really that told me that. Work stays. Yeah, yeah, like that. That that's something that it what compounds. I know now that would have been very motivating for me to like stay on it. Like, oh, man, I know. The, I guarantee. I tell you this right now, hundred percent. As I get older, I guarantee my training is going to eventually morph and evolve to. 
you know, I'll be staying active every day, but I'll probably be lifting twice a week and it'll be full body into my 60s, 70s and beyond. Mm -hmm. And I know I'll maintain good movement and strength from as long as I stay active on the other days. Of course, there's value in being active every day. So I don't want to you know, mislead anybody and say, oh, you just work out twice a week and then the rest of the day, you, yeah. you know. No, I, I hope that's not how this is being interpreted, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not to, you know, tell people, oh, you know, it's great is when you get 40, then you know, barely work out. You yeah. know? Watch <laughs> TV all that. Yeah, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's a really encouraging thing because sometimes when you're, you know, and I, I know there's got to be 20 year olds that are listening to this right now, it can be discouraging. You're working your ass off sometimes when you're really young, trying all these things yeah. and pushing really hard and like barely seeing the body change, barely seeing strength mm -hmm. go up. And it seems like, oh my God, why? Why do I do all this just to be a little bit stronger? Well, the or a irony bit is, the irony is, on average, I'll ask you guys. On average, of all when you all the people you guys trained for as long as you train them, because all of us had clients towards the end of our career and we got good, where that would stay with us for ten plus years. How many times a week would you train most of your clients? Yeah, two probably or three two. Times. Yeah, two, two or three times. times at the most, right? Yeah. I, I, did you have any client? Almost no clients that I trained more than that. It was well, yeah, I had like a few, but it, but honestly, the ones that would hire me for more, we just do mobility or do like active yes. uh, recovery days. Exactly, and I would just take them through that. But it wasn't like we were training intensively. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I know uh, I want to ask you guys about your weekends because I know you guys both did different things and had a lot of stuff. You had a party. That you yeah, threw? so we threw a party for my in-laws. It was uh, fifty years of their their anniversary together. So wow. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Uh, Fifty spent. years. Yeah, that's that's some work, man. Yes, yeah, so that was like a, a staple thing that we wanted to celebrate. So it was like, because it kind of got thrown in our direction in terms of like, like let's see who can like throw the party and where. And we tried like vineyards and all this stuff, and we're like, nah, let's so let's just you know throw it at our place and, and break it in. I haven't actually thrown a big party at our place yet, so it was like, well. Here we go. You know, let's get it already. Man, that's a lot of work, dude. <laughs> I was yeah. like, is this why busting were, my ass, Is this dude. why you were weed whacking everything? Weed whacking. I, I bought, like, I, I had one of those, like, uh, battery-powered blowers, and I was like, dude, this is not going to cut it. It, like, died, like, like a fraction of the way through, so I went and bought, like, gas-powered ones. You know so that I'm they're going to ban Polluting the environment with everything I can now. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a charcoal because it gets it done. You know, <laughs> I like, thought they did. I thought they already did ban all that. I I, I have an electric one and it sucks, dude. It's terrible. It, yeah. the, the battery dies. Tesla needs to make one. They don't even last. They don't yeah. even. They don't even last that long. The battery dies no. so fast. I think it's that they, you, get, you get like one usage out of it, and then you got to charge it again. Yeah, I think yeah, that, they're, that they're making those illegal, right? Because of I thought they already were. I thought one of you guys. California's brought that up. making everything illegal, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Hey, how much does it suck being the host of like a party like that big? Dude? It's brutal. Yeah. Are you I'm, still? You're probably still cleaning up for I'm it. I'm still, and I mean, I did pretty much all of it the next day too, because Courtney had like a hair appointment, and then um, <laughs> conveniently, I, yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> don't do anything. I'll just come back and I'm like that's not gonna happen I can't sit here and look at this mess you know like it was driving me crazy she's just taking a nap she's okay. running <laughs> she's running games she's, she knows like exactly yeah. what she's doing with that so but it's fine dude it was cool um everybody had a good time we got the same band like I I went to one of uh, Adam and Katrina's party you were there yeah, too. yeah 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 that same band oh, we yeah, hired them fun. Uh, for our place and they, you know, they threw down, they did a good job. So everybody had a good time. I've got plenty of, uh, beer left and I'm like shoving it off to my brother-in-law. Did, like, you, did you sing with the band? To be honest, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had a little bit of a, a session where we're all chopping it up about like, you know, instruments and uh, <laughs> hey, what's, gigs. What's, and, yeah. What's the, what's the band lingo? Like when you go over yeah. to come talk hey, to, let, to let them know, right? Seven they're talking about the, like uh, yeah, what they're doing, the recording studio and like, you know, launching an EP and the that's going to turn into an album. Is that the like, new electric dual pedal yeah, right there yeah, that yeah. I see you around? Like sweet it? humbuckers on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that Gibson, bro. What? You must be in a band yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I do have to throw a little bit of that in there. So, yeah, of course you so do. they know that, like, at least. I'm privy to yeah. they gotta be on their game, right? They yeah. can't, be, can't be cheating stuff, right? Exactly. Dude. <laughs> you ever, I'm paying hey, you. you ever guys, get but also if you need a backup singer. <laughs> you ever get people like that Hook when they when they meet you and they're like, So what do you do? And you're like, Oh, I have this fitness pod, whatever. Oh yeah, I used to lift, you know, in yeah. high school. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you bench? Like four or five? Yeah. No, I know you you get that right now. When you're the when you're as buff as you are right yeah. now and it's like everybody can see it through your shirt and stuff like that, yeah. they can't help but make comments, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you either get dude, how awkward are the handshakes, right? Yeah, because like Guy that sees you're a big guy, they'll go yeah, like they'll dude. use their whole body. I used you either get you either get uncomfortable compliments or people explaining to you why they're not working out yeah. or why they're eating the way I they know, are right dude. now. Like, oh, dude, I used well, to be yeah. a water polo. Yeah. Like I was, oh 
man. You yeah. should have seen me. Don't do like, the okay, hard. Dude. I'm gonna tell you guys. I'm gonna say. I hope everybody, whoever shakes my hand, watches. Don't do the excessively hard squeeze <laughs> yeah. on my hand because I will crush your hand. <laughs> yeah. Like if you do that, I have a really strong. That's my invitation to break, <laughs> to break the hand. Yeah, okay? that that person that does it needs a lesson. Yeah, like that, uh, I usually give them the no thumb or like you know like <laughs> real. If they the start flipper. like real hard, sometimes I just go real limp and just the, oh. Uh, like, did I ever like tell make you, them feel powerful? Did I ever for tell you guys when I did that to my sister's boyfriend? I was a really over. I was a super overprotective brother. Like yeah. like bat. Like my sister, the sister under me. So it's me and I have a sister. Yeah, and I mean, that's how sister. it should be. Well, Let's I was be I was excessive. Like yeah. my poor sister, she was gorgeous. Right, my sister's beautiful, smart. She thought she was unattractive in high school because no boys would talk to her because they were terrified. <laughs> she scared them all. Off. I swear to God, when she graduated, she literally said that, like, "Yeah, you know, guys didn't re weren't really attracted, you know, to me, and nobody really talked to me." And I'm like, uh, "I got I got something to tell you." you know? <laughs> but she she had a boyfriend once, yeah. and he came in, and I was you know I saw him walking up, and he goes to shake my hand, and oh yeah, he got a. I, he, he went when he like guess went, Ugh. and my sister looking at me like, so, what are you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you, buddy. Anyway. Nice to meet you. How about you, Adam? How's yours? I've had a, a pretty crazy, weird last four or five days, man. Um, I went everything from like uh, good stuff, bad stuff, great stuff, um, sperm banks, surgeries. Oh, uh, spank bank, huh? Yeah, that was my first time. First, give us an update on your boy. He did the surgery. Yeah, that was actually came second, but I'll give you the update on that first if you okay. want to hear that. So he did do the. So uh, yeah, I had the sperm bank on on Thursday. <laughs> Friday was the. It's not really a sperm bank either. It's something else. Yeah, what do they call it? I don't what even know what you call it. Scientific it's, name. For I'll, it. I'll tell you how fucking awkward it was. Though, called, it, though, so. It's called the public Dude. bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the sperm factory. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, I don't think I had a hand it was Doug's house. Bathroom. <laughs> it's called Doug's house. <laughs> Truck stop. Yeah. Doug's like, why you got to use the bathroom in my house again? Be back, Doug. Uh, no, so okay, uh, so his surgery. I'll tell you that because I know I have had a lot of people that want to update on how Max is doing. He's doing incredible. So he had, um, yeah, and his adenoid. Is that how you say it? Adenoid, yeah, it adenoid, adenoid removed, and he had uh, tubes put in his ear, and <clears throat> and the doctor actually said that. Oh my God! So you guys, it's so good that you guys did this. She, it was some of the largest adenoid he'd ever seen before because it was and and what happened. So this is my understanding of why this is so bad and why it was such an issue for him, is that it gets inflamed and then it 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 ca traps bacteria. Yep. And so you just become really susceptible to getting That's sick. Why he's been getting sick so which much. explains why we haven't had 14 days in a row of him not being sick whatsoever. Then add in the fact that based off of his anatomy of his ear, that water gets trapped behind his eardrums. So basically for the last two and a half years, he's been underwater listening to us, which explains his slow speech. Like he has not been able to, like even though he's we've he's like we had him through speech therapy. He's I told talking you. the way he hears it. Yes. It's like I can communicate with him because I totally understand what he's want what he wants because I'm with him every day and I can tell he understands everything. And even when we had him in speech therapy, the speech therapist said, "You know, I'm pretty much done here. He's I can tell he's he's learning. He's just going to be one of those kids who talks later." Is what her explanation yeah. was to it. And it wasn't until we saw the 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 um, specialist that was like, "Oh no, he's he's underwater." He's mm -hmm. been listening to you guys muffled, and they're like, "Just watch, you'll see a difference immediately." And it's wild. Like we're on day three right now, four, day, three, four, day three or four right mm -hmm. now since the surgery. Now, of course, uh, the day after or the day of and after, he's kind of like, you know, still from the um, anesthesia. Yeah, right? the anesthesia trying to wear off, yeah. and that was that was a. For, that was hard, right? Uh, Katrina cried. Like it was, yeah. it was pretty emotional. Well, yeah, because it it's rough, disorienting. Right after, right after if you've ever come in anesthesia, it's disorienting. So I can only imagine for a kid. Yeah, going in was fine. Like he took the laughing gas and he was l having fun and he totally waved goodbye to Katrina, yeah. which which is funny because she came out, she was crying. I one, we, yeah. st we still got these stupid COVID rules. Oh, bro, don't I get me started right oh, now. Oh, I'm just yeah. don't get me started. Don't get me right started. I actually mouthed off inside there because I was so irritated because. You know, my wife comes out crying because she just saw my son get taken away to go fucking. They only allow one person. Yeah, and then like in this massive, empty freaking waiting room, you know, I'm consoling her to find out is it okay? Is he okay? What's going on? She's crying. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Only, only one, one, only one parent in here. Oh I'm like, God, oh, <laughs> you have really just. It will end you. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. Right. So, anyways. She, uh, you know, she was crying because just because they took him. But she's like, I was like, is it okay? Is he okay? Was, was he, was he, and she's like, no, he was fine. I'm still, I'm just emotional because they took him yeah. or whatever. So they take him. I got to wait outside till all this is all done. And then when he comes out, 
he is. He's just so disoriented that we had to stay out in the parking lot for like an hour. That's normal. Because he was just like, he, and he's not like this. Like, I, uh, I, I don't know if I've told you guys, I, he loves the car. He's never in three years now cried to get in the car seat. Like, oh. he loves to go for a car ride. Like, that's like one of his favorite things to do. And trying to get him in the car seat, he was just flipping out. He wanted to be held, probably. Yeah, yeah. He just he wanted to be held. He didn't want to sit down. He just wanted mom to hold him and be close. He didn't even want me. He wanted. He just wanted her and just to hold him and just. And oh, he, so, so we had to do that for like an hour. And Katrina was like looking at me like we got to go. And I'm like, no. You guys had already told me don't even come to work. You do just don't worry about it. So I told her. I said, listen, I'm not going to go into work. Just we'll sit out here. I said we'll just sit in the parking lot until he calms down. So he calmed down. <clears throat> we took him home. And of course, all day he was in and out sleeping and. So you can't really tell anything then. But he woke up the next day, the very next morning, like poof, just bright eyed, bushy tailed, happy, playing, oh, talking. And right away, what we saw him doing already was talking to himself more so he could probably hear himself more clear. So he'd be, be like babbling and talking when he's playing and stuff with That's his toys. That's so awesome. And then, uh, then all of a sudden when we were talking to him, he was like trying to repeat everything we said, like way more than usual. Like mm. normally I have to like try and get him to say something like triangle, square, I'm, and I'm coaching him where I was just talking to him and then he would try and say what I was saying. So he was already trying to, now it's still not super sharp, but in these three days that have gone by, it's gotten sharper and sharper wow. and sharper each day. Which well, is I got to apologize. I must have messaged you. I can't handle that stuff. When the kids, <laughs> when one of the kids is, I'm like texting him every yeah, five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. definitely, you were definitely. I'm like consoling from afar. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Sal, Sal's emotional and scared enough for all of us. That's uh, so. when it comes to the kids, man. I, no, I, I no, can't handle no, no. that. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. checking up on it. And everybody too, like as far as the audience, like, I mean, I got, I got so many DMs and messages. I tell you what was one of the coolest things that I got. And I, and I'll say it on the show. Uh, cause I, I probably didn't get a chance to answer everybody, but I got, when I first talked about on the show, what was really nice. And I share with Katrina and by the way, this is one of the things that, uh, really, uh, um, made her feel better going into the surgery was I must've got, I don't know, 50 plus DMS oh, of, that's of other parents who've been done the process who, who have done, done it. And we're just like, Oh my God, it's amazing. Adam. It's so worth that's it. You're, when Western medicine does things right. It really oh, does, right? man. It yeah. was, so that was, that was really, really cool, uh, to experience that and to get that type of a response from everybody. I shared with Katrina and it made her feel so much better that we were, that so many people had such great success and it was such an easy well, surgery. Cool. I'm so glad that. He's so <clears throat> yeah, that was my, that part. And then I, so now we're going through this, um, uh, um, Fertility, uh, yeah. For thank you, Justin. Yeah, no uh, fertility expert, like so. Katrina went and saw because we gave kind of like this cutoff date that if we don't get pregnant by the time Max turns three, that we're gonna we're gonna shut down the factory. That's just that's partially that's our agreement that we just decided. Mm -hmm. She's gonna be forty two. Uh, that's already starting to get a pretty good age gap. I, I if if I have two kids, I want them to be more like siblings and not more like parent sibling right. relationship, which I think tends to happen after you get beyond four or five years. Yeah, I agree. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, I think that's just kind of what happens tends to. Um, so that we've just agreed on that, right? So we're getting closer to that crunch time. And so Katrina says, you know, I, I just want to explore. Like I know we haven't been really trying for very long, um, but let's let's just go see with a fertility expert. So I'm like. She's been doing all this, and I'm like, yeah, 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 agreeing to whatever. I'm not really paying attention, to be honest with you. So I'm just like, yeah, 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 sure, I'll do whatever. Schedule right? it. I'll yeah. be there. I'm being a typical husband, <laughs> yeah. right? To, yeah, typical husband. Hey, in 30 right? minutes, Wait, what's happening? Yeah. No, in 30, in 30 hey, minutes, you got to go jerk hey, off. And hey, go. What are no, you guys going to do to me? Literally, that says this goes down. I'm just agreeing to shit like the typical fucking husband who's pretending to listen, who's not really listening. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, honey, whatever. I'll yeah. support you. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Tell me when. Yeah. So then she tells me just last week, she goes, um, Tomorrow you're going to the clinic um, to do the the sperm thing. And I'm like, what? what? Sperm thing? What? The clinic? Me? Why am I going? I thought you were doing all this stuff, <laughs> right? She's like, no, you have to go down there and get a sample. I said, we just had sex. Like yesterday, you want me to go and they want me to fill something up? I just like, <laughs> we need some milk. Yeah. Me dry. Yo, we got into like a fight like over it. She's like, I told the doctor how much sex we have. I told her that we have sex like every other day. And she's like, well, you should wait five days. And then I asked her. That's a it, lot of pressure. They're like, fill it up to the Bro, that's really? exactly, I said, it all that's all exactly what I said. I got mad. I'm just like, you're there. I have to give them a certain amount. And she's like, well, no, it's okay. Because if you don't, you just have to do it again. I'm like, I don't want to have to do this multiple times. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right then and there, or you come back? <laughs> you need to come back again. I was going to say, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yes. They look at the cup. Yeah, go back in the room. And I go, Katrina, I said, the, the likelihood that I'm going to have to come back because we had sex yesterday is pretty high. At least give me another day or two in between, and we can't have sex. 
So she's like, okay. So she pushed it out two more days. So at least I had like a three day break. In so you get to build up reserves. Yes, yeah, so a little bit of a build up. Hold on. So how does this work? You go in. Oh, bro. The it nurse. Is. So it this is, is always. I've always thought it's the worst experience ever. Well, I was gonna say because I refuse to do it again. Everybody knows you're jerking off. That's what's weird about it. You show up, they give you a cup, and you're like, hey, thank you. It's and awkward. Like, the nurses eye contact with everybody bro, in there. The, the nurses are awkward. The, yeah. the, the the procedure's weird. So can you walk what do you mean in? The procedure. It's. It's, I mean, He's done the, this the, before. The, the process. <laughs> the process. That procedure. The, well, what yeah. do I do with my hands? <laughs> no, actually, I haven't done it like this before. I do, this is not, even when I do it at home, it doesn't look like this at all. <laughs> Nothing like this at all. So I walk into this place, right? Which is, and, and they're all covid it out too. So I got to wear a mask too, okay? So I'm I'm masked that up. That already ruins my mood. I, it's me too. I, just, I would yeah. never like, I would never do this with a mask yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> I would never do this <laughs> on my own face? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with gloves. So I, okay, so I walk <laughs> You have to wear gloves. I walk, <laughs> I walk in, bro. It's it was an awful experience. It really was. So I walk in. I check in and you're right. Everybody knows what you're there for. So it's just this weird feeling of like okay i'm gonna check uh, in i'm gonna uh, sign some paperwork uh, and then i'm gonna go i'm supposed to masturbate at three okay, like, yeah how, how old school like did you have like a tv and like dude like okay VHS so listen listen, so I, I, listen linda <laughs> okay i sorry. check in it's only a few minutes and then a, a nurse escorts me back into this back room and you walk in this room and it's it it's disgusting i mean because it's set up to do just that what do you mean not, set up I mean, it, like so tangled. so there's a there's a a, a leather like a spinning bed. There's a leather you? chair. There's music play. <laughs> there's a leather chair. Okay. With a with an ottoman, and it's got a you know one of those big. Oh, wow, you can do like a laid down then, version. It, and then it has a big dog pee pad on it. Wow. You know that you can you throw away because people's naked asses are probably sitting on this thing, right? Wow. And then you have a, a TV in front of you with your wide selection of DVD collection. It has like the dim lighting. But here's the weird part. Immediately, you're thinking of all the dudes that were in there before you. A hundred percent is all I'm thinking about. It's like literally, like how can you not? There was 15 dudes right before me today. I'm thinking about <laughs> that works for some people. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, you're like, you know, and they, of no. course they have like, please. Now, now you're competitive. Where you're like, hey, what's the most? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me the most anybody's ever bought. No, back. I'm already feeling insecure with the jar. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying like my wife only gave me three days. Like, if I would have known this was going to be like that, I would have been like, a, cup, like we're, you know? is that why we're eating celibate for a month? You know, what I'm saying like a month, we're not having anything like this. I'm going to load this thing up, you know. <laughs> but since so she surprised me, you know, hey, tomorrow you're going to go. Now do we this. got good. We got good health insurance with mind pump. Oh so my! Did the nurse come help you? If so you do that? no. Okay, they they had this weird process where they, and it's like you you have this this sheet on the wall okay so this is this whole thing is awkward and i had to read all these rules there's an order i have to wash my what hands kind of dry them no lubrication you have to uh fill this paperwork it's out dry dry? then you have to then yes you have to you, have to, you have to, then sit here throw this away then wash hands again then stand there's a red x on the ground and it's in the corner so i have to like that's what you're aiming for no 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 no, no, no. this is after <laughs> So I had to stand in the corner on this red X and I pushed that I unlocked the door and pushed the light in and I had to wait for the nurse to come in to let her know that I'm 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 done. It's just this it's all wait a minute. Something what happened before that they decided to add that? There must have been a dude in there like you know, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. That's exactly, get the cup. That's what I think ha <laughs> has to be something like that. Yeah. That sweat. Right? <laughs> Can you hold the cup for me? Yeah. Uh -oh. But I mean, uh, every bit about it was was awkward and weird and just... Boy, talk about the mental games because you're not... I mean, it's hard to be in the mood like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not like that at all. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, like, I know some guys can like just turn it on and just like, that's. I'm not one of those dudes, dude. I don't have like this like... Did they have like affirming like words coming through yeah. the speakers? Like, you, you're such a great guy. <laughs> yeah. You work so hard. You're so good looking. Yeah, <laughs> like all the tapes okay. are like no. you know, like nursing hospital. No, you have the best it's, podcast. It's weird. It was it was very. It, and then, uh, but you but you hit the limit. The, you didn't and, have to go back. Well, and then I I mean I don't know what you guys, but I mean I've never tried to aim to aim into a little plastic cup. Not that it's peeing, not, it, it, peeing it, in a plastic it's cup. Not accurate. Peeing yeah. in a plastic cup. Yeah. Not such a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting that in a plastic wow. cup is pretty unpredictable. Is very unpredictable yeah. and not very it, not, not. Is it opaque or clear? A little uh, bit of both. Oh, so yeah. you can see what's going on. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, you mean the jars? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it's like a like a clear, clearish like yeah, like you're you're a little old. the same thing you pee in. It's the wow. same thing. Those same little cups that you pee in. You imagine? You I bet you. I guarantee because obviously they do this all the time. Look, yeah. it's a medical thing. I get it. We're all being right, you know right, we're right. all being you know kids about it. But 
somebody at some point has dropped one of those jars on the floor. You know what I mean? For sure. Somebody. Could you imagine that? Ruin the sample. The guy's like, oh, God, I finally... Oh, no! Shit. I gotta Bro, it back. was... It was. Let's just say it was very difficult for me to be to keep everything clean and not make a mess. Wow. And I was, like, really and trying you, not to do Okay, that. and so then the million-dollar question is you vetted this doctor that's then going to apply <laughs> yeah. this. Right? Oh, yeah. I, I did watch that. Hey, I watched the documentary, That's dude. my number one concern yeah. this whole process. Like, I want to make sure... And I told Katrina, I was like, how do we know that it's mine that they're, they're going to use? Like, are they going to for sure do that? So right. what we're doing... Okay, we're not doing in vitro. We're doing some... I, I don't know the name. You'll have to ask her. Oh, it's... you. Uh, I, I, you no. No, I can't remember the name. So I know what you're talking I, about. They basically it. flush her, and then they they clean mine. Yeah, they put it in as close as they can. To, they they inject it into her essentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're not doing any. They're not in vitro. They wait until she's ovulating, and then they do the yes. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what this whole thing. But yeah, she was just telling me today. She was just like, I said, Hey, did you hear anything back? I mean, <laughs> am I good? Am I, what was, what was, <laughs> did I hit? Did I hit the mark? Whatever. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Well, if we don't, you just go back. I says, No, I'm not. Oh. You better find out if I can do homework because I ain't fucking going in there. Again. Have a home service? <laughs> There's no way you cannot get me to do that again. I'm sorry. There's it was, it was that awkward and weird for me that I don't. I wouldn't want to. There's I don't no, know. Yeah. It is kind of weird. I, I get it. Like again, that's a private thing. <laughs> you're like you're walking in. Everybody knows. Yeah. You know what's going on? Hi, I'm here for the And they don't class. try they don't try and make you feel comfortable or be lighthearted about things. It's all like all militant. <laughs> yeah, you know? It's all sterile. Yeah, right? dude. Like tell me some jokes or something so I get my mind off of what I'm doing. Like anything but <laughs> off of like just Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. you just reminded me of a weird article I read the other day. <laughs> so there was a man in Ireland. I gotta read this to you guys because this is the craziest. <clears throat> I don't know. Guys do some weird shit sometimes. That's all I can say. So this dude Most was time. this dude was hospitalized. Ready for this? I'm going to read you the title of this. Hospital man, hospitalized man regrets injecting himself with semen to cure his bad back. So apparently this what? guy thought that if he injected semen into his back, it would uh, it would cure his, his back pain. Wow. Where yeah. did you get this? Some weird biohacking blood? I have no idea, but it didn't work. So that's all. I mean, we have, me <laughs> I mean, we have, pe we have, we have people rolling on their backs and butthole tanning right now, dude. Well, so, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, that it's, not the, that, it's not that far that fetched from so that dumb. to me. It's not that far fetched. You know what's dumb about that is that this is the part of this, the social media fitness industry that it's so ridiculous to me. There was a point where, okay, here's the thing. A lot of people in the fitness space, they try to find reasons to take pictures of themselves semi-naked. And it was a great excuse mm -hmm. for people to show themselves laying out in the sun with their legs open, pointing towards us. And I saw a lot of people and we, fitness influencers. And remember when we first started the podcast? There was like a yeah. it was, the first couple of years. There was like that movement of like everybody taking naked. Oh, butt oh. shots! Yeah, butt shots all naked. Remember that was like yeah. a trend for like a like year to two years. One there. of our friends did it. Yes. And we're like, what are you doing? What is this? I need a reason. You know. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know. And there you go. No. Oh. Anyway, yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm Weird. gonna. I'm gonna move this to health here real quick. Okay. I want to give a shout out to. I mean, we uh, were talking about health. This is kind of healthy practice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to talk. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our friend Dr. Becky Campbell because she's helped me and and Jessica out with Aurelia. So check this out, right? So. Aurelius has been getting these kind of like. Are you guys familiar with the like a low histamine diet? Have you? Uh -huh. We've heard. We've, you guys have talked to her yeah, about Courtney's, it. Yeah, no, no avocado, no like things like yeah, that. Protocol. Part of it. Yeah. Okay. So he's been getting kind of this mild rash. We're trying to figure out what's going on. So as we're doing this testing, Dr. Becky Campbell suggested uh, that we do a uh, low histamine diet, and it totally, it's totally working. Now that's not the 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 solution. That's just temporary. Why we figure out what is actually going on. But I can't believe the difference in my son's skin. Literally within three or four days, we saw a dramatic improvement. And so we're avoiding any high histamine food. So like no sardines because that's canned fish. If he eats meat, it's got to be fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, we're avoiding things like avocado, which is histamine, citrus uh, fruits, which are histamine releasing. And there's a whole list. She has a book that she wrote about all this. And she's again, she's been helping us. But yeah. man, what a remarkable difference he's had in his skin. You know, speaking of that, I, I don't remember when I told you guys that we were <clears throat> exploring cutting out the, the gluten from Max. Katrina said she noticed it uh, right away. Wow. So I think that's what it was, was he was eating that that raisin bread toast like every single day for a long time. And I, I, I don't know if it, that was the root cause of what was going on or that was just making it worse. Like it was just inflaming him more you know, and making it more difficult to breathe. I know there's a lot of uh, um, conflicting information about gluten. I, th I think gluten is one of those things, my strong opinion is, it's one of those, those things that if you can tolerate it well, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you have an issue with food, it tends to be gluten tends to be one of those things. It's a it's a highly so similar reactive to lactose, right? Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a it's a it's a 
it's a protein found in plants and it's a highly reactive one for a lot of people. So if you have like autoimmune issues, um, one of the first things you want to cut out is gluten. But I, I don't think gluten's bad. Like dairy. Dairy is a highly reactive food for a lot of people. But yeah. for some people, it's perfectly fine and extremely healthy. I wouldn't put gluten in the same category necessarily in terms of healthiness. But um, I notice a, a difference with uh, myself, with my kids, eliminating gluten. And obviously, they have my genetics, so they probably are somewhat reactive to certain foods. Yeah, I mean, any kind of gut issues. I mean, it's the, gluten made a massive difference for me. And then also, like, Courtney's on the, the – um, the histamine kind of protocol, Dr. Becky Campbell was, was game changer because um, she was like Hashimoto's was, was dealing with that. <laughs> Did it work yeah. for yeah. her? So yeah, it totally has been thyroid remarkable. Issues. Yes, yeah, thyroid, thyroid. Often thyroid issues, yeah. uh, people are reactive to gluten. So if you have uh, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, so uh, too much or too little, um, um, oftentimes eliminating gluten makes a, a pretty big impact. Yeah. So. So I had this, uh, speaking of our kids and stuff, um, I had, <laughs> had one of those moments where um, uh, Ethan, so my oldest, decides to rebel a bit, right? And so I'm like, oh, great. Like, th it begins. But this is actually one of those where I'm like allowing it and tolerating it because I'm like, if he's going to rebel at anything, at least it's this. So we lost him to a different uh, Bay Area team instead of the A's. So he's like, oh, right. He just bought himself a, a Giants hat, like right in front of me, like deliberately wow. rebelling. I'm like, what the hell is this? Oh, wow. wow. Like, we're an A's family. You That's know? interesting. Yeah. And he just was like, ha, 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 like, like in my face about it, dude. And oh, that's like, funny. That's okay. the age, right? He's 12. Okay, buddy. Yeah. 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 He's yeah, about, he's when's he 12. turn 13? Yeah. So not till uh, March, but yeah. Yeah. Now it's, I imagine this must mean he's at the age now, because it's about that age I remember for me too, where him and his buddies are probably starting to talk sports and are they actually watching or getting into it? Like, is he starting to watch? Yes. Yeah, so all his friends are big Giants fans yeah, and all that. Yeah. And I'm like, that's inevitable. But like, I've been in here. I take a little bit of like, it, it stings a little because I had all these plans of taking him to A's games this summer with my brother because we're huge A's fans and like he's already indoctrinated his uh, boy yeah. and is totally into it. I'm like, oh, this is great because I remember that growing up and then it's like, he, and now he's just already. So yeah, but you know off. what? It'll be great though because the Battle of the Bay happens every year. Yeah. That now becomes the traditional oh, yeah. game that now, you guys go to. Now there's two things you could do. It's off the top of my head. If you push back against him, he'll always be a Giants fan. Because oh, yeah, it's yeah. A, something he does with his dad. Yeah. Or if you act like no big deal, yeah, it comes mm -hmm. the A's game. Oh. You can wear your Giants hat and you just let him chill. Then he might go back to. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I I definitely sarcastically like uh, 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 shun him. I'd be I'd be, <laughs> I'd be torn on what I'd want because I, I get where, where you're coming from, like the rebellious side, because there's a part of you that would probably empower and want the like I'm my I'm my own individual and I'm gonna like who I want like just because yeah. so you like that part I do but yeah. then there's a part of course as a dad oh I, yeah, I was like oh I it's like a missed uh, opportunity for me you know but at the same time I remember even personally there was like that age like and it totally was around like 13 all that where uh my brother and my dad both loved the Lakers and all that and I was like full on Celtics. Yeah. You know, or, you know, Michael Jordan and the yeah. Bulls. Like just to be antagonist. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, see, so you gotta love I mean he's got you and you Yeah, so, so I get it. Uh, you know, but I, it's like oh. I, I rebelled by wearing excessively baggy jeans. And I remember my <laughs> dad Oh yeah, dude. I came home. <laughs> I can't I used to, those are the best. Oh dude, I came home and my dad's like uh are you going to wear pants that fit you? And I said and I replied the wrong way to my dad. I said, you can't tell me what I'm going to wear. And he goes, I'll rip those pants off you right now. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Watch I, went, me. I went and changed. Because he would. He would have ripped run off me. Have, have, you like, see, have you seen those trends? Funny. Andrew has to definitely throw this clip in there. Oh. There's, a, there's a, a viral TikTok trend that's going right now where guys, have you seen this yet, Andrew? Yeah. Where dudes walk up behind other guys and they grab the back two pockets of yeah, their back jeans. Two, they literally and they, shred it and they just off. rip from the, the, the back pockets and just rip oh. the see, back of their jeans off. Now, do they pre-cut them ahead of time? Because that's like, that's I mean. That's tough. Yeah, that's know. hard to do. Hey, like, hey, pull someone down. This guy wears jeans all the time. We'll practice on Justin. No, 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 I mean, no. Doug. Doug, Doug does. Oh, yeah. Don't mess with we'll Doug. Get, we'll get, we'll get, you, don't want, you don't want Doug. They're too expensive. You don't want Doug to go <laughs> off. Like he does like the <laughs> expensive brands. Doug has a line. We don't want to cross that line. <laughs> no ripping. You don't want bare ass Doug. Okay. Yeah. He's, I've, he's I've, a monster. I've seen him at the line. Never seen yeah. Speaking of Doug, Doug, did you know that um, ButcherBox now has these uh, 
uh, ribs that are already pre-cooked and marinated yet. I do not know that. So I just bought those. So, so you just warm them up in the oven and then you're yeah, that's all you need to do. How are they? Nice. Well, I haven't had them yet. So I, I cooked last night. I actually de- I have I'll cook them tonight. So I'll give I'll give the feedback on how, how they have. It. They're getting more and more of those products where they're already pre-done. Uh-huh. Yeah, wasn't it? I got the burnt ends. Yeah, the burnt ends are already. I, done. Yeah, those are good. I had yeah. those. So really I did good. those last week. I did the pork uh, pulled pork. Was really good. They so my recommended pork. on the burnt, and I want to hear your guys' opinion on it. So the burnt ends I did in the oven. Mm-hmm. What I didn't do the first time, I did it twice. The the first time, what I didn't do it was add anything or do it. The second time, I actually put barbecue sauce on it. Yeah, because yeah. recooking already cooked burnt ends kind of yeah, dried them out dry. a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. helped to kind of keep them moist. That's right. Yeah. So recommendation: if you buy that, that's what I would do. Is I would I would lather them up with your favorite barbecue sauce and then then recook them again because then it'll Dude, soak up the juice. Speaking of protein, yeah. so you, you guys know how I've been kind of trying to cut calories, and I'm going to be doing some videos for Mind Pump. Can't reveal too much of what's going on, but I've been trying to keep my protein- Mind Pump re- only fans. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's that's it right there. Yep. I've been trying to keep my protein up, and it's really hard to do calorie-wise because obviously protein often comes with fat calories, right? And it's not very palatable, eat dry uh, chicken breast or whatever. So I've been doing uh, the bone broth protein from Paleo Valley, but a lot. Like I've been doing over 100 grams a day of the bone broth protein. Oh my God. So, okay, do you- Wow. Double up on a serving, or do you actually make four shakes? I can a day? do six, sixty to seventy grams at once. No effect on my gut at all. What, is it make it chalky and no? Thick? It's yeah, not it's, bad. So you, okay, you it, put that in your shake, your protein water. Oh, Just water. mix it up, water? and I pound it, and it and it does not have some water with your shake, huh? Listen, <laughs> it, it's like all powder. Nothing. Listen, I can't do that with protein powders usually, yeah. but with the bone broth, does not bother my gut at all. It's literally is that like because, neutral kind of. Is that because like how how thin it is? It it's doesn't, because it's bone broth protein, and it's super unprocessed. It's literally there's nothing in it. If you look at the bag and look at ingredients, bone broth protein. There's no flavor, no color, no nothing. Hmm. So, I mean, I can load up on it, and I can't do that with any other protein because it tends to bother. I haven't even played with that one. You're the you use that consistently all the time. I always see you scooping that in the back. I didn't know you just eat all our beef sticks. So, (laughs) I'm happy with those. I know they haven't. I mean, they knocked it out the park with that. By the way, we had those turkey. I never got a turkey one. Oh, mm. you guys fantastic. crushed! Fantastic! You yeah. guys crushed all yeah. the turkey ones. I, I, I you got to get faster. I think they're, I'm going to keep I'm, eating those. They're as good as the beef ones, or maybe yeah. even better. They're really good. They really are, though. Yeah. Really? I swear no to God. Joke. Wow. They're hella yeah. good. Wow. It's super tasty. Hey, real quick, you got to check out check out one of our sponsors, Live On Lab. So they make supplements with liposomal delivery technology. What is that? That means when you take the supplement, the liposomal technology encapsulates it in a liposome, okay? And it gets to the target tissues of your body. What does that mean? That means you don't pee it out. It's absorbed where you want it to get absorbed. And right now you can get a lipoglutathione for free when you bundle B-complex with vitamin C. Uh, Their liposomal glutathione, one of my favorite uh, supplements, um, actually works really well for my health, my immunity, and I notice better recovery. But anyway, their supplements are some of the best. This is pharmaceutical grade technology, you got to go check them out. Go to liveonlabs.com. That's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S.com forward slash M-P uh, for that hookup. All right. Here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Freeman Axtell. What are some of your favorite ways to increase recovery capacity? Oh, that's a that's a really good question. Um, no, the the number one way that I notice an improvement in my recovery is if I have better, more consistent quality sleep. I don't notice anything impact my recovery quite as good, aside from Ooh, obviously a, that's a, one of the biggest factors for recovery. Yeah, in general. I would I would so now consider my diet isn't. Go, doesn't go from bad to good and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, without, right. I mean, we all eat pretty relatively yeah. good. I so what I would challenge as far as more impactful, I mobility, man. Doing Active like a recovery, yeah. Doing a, after after a really hard training session, um, you know, doing a really good you know uh, mobility session to follow that, you know, either the same day or the day after. Uh, facilitates recovery really i notice a big difference from that yeah mm-hmm. so more like, so than all the other hacks like i play with everything right that we've done we do the cold plunge we've got the yeah. sauna stuff like yeah. uh, you know those things those things are all cool hacks and if you got the money to spend on stuff like that i think they all work and i think they're all cool but mobility rest and feeding your, yourself has to be the three it is i used mm-hmm. to rely a lot on food when I was younger, I would just eat more and, um, I would fool myself by doing that because you get a short-term strength increase by bumping your calories. 
And, uh, but it wouldn't last very long. And then I start putting on body fat, but sleep still to this day, if I'm like, Ooh, I feel a little overtrained. If I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll be like, okay, tonight, you know, two hours before bed, I'm going to turn off all the electronics. I'm going to make sure the room is set up nice. I'm going to make sure I don't eat anything a few hours before bed, stay calm, you know, do some nice, you know, stretching beforehand. Um, and I get good sleep and I always wake up the next day notice. And the same thing, if I'm starting to get sick, if I'm starting to get sick, a good night of sleep makes a huge difference. I really have not done anything else that makes that big of an improvement. Now you mentioned a bunch of these hacks, right? Like cold plunge and sauna. I think that can help. I, I, mm. It doesn't come close though. It doesn't come close. Yeah, to I know. Like, I think that's what they're kind of trying to get out of us. And like, there's things like, even with the juve light, like the red light therapy, like I like to use that every now and then for like when I'm doing my mobility practices or I'm just doing light movement, I do it in front of the juve. Uh, if I've had really hard, intensive training sessions where I know I'm going to be sore. Uh, but it's like, what's moving the needle more? Is it that, or is it me just like getting that kind of recovery movement? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't hurt, you know, it's like well, to add all these things in the mix. If you can listen, if you, if you're hitting those three, then those things are awesome. In my opinion, yeah. Yeah. if you, if you are, hitting adequate protein intake, you are resting, you're doing active recovery through mobility days, then adding, you know, uh, yeah. the infrared sauna or the juve light or cold plunge stuff, I think is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think it's... Uh, that, I would have throw a massage in there every now right, and then. Yeah, or deep know? tissue massage. Like, th those things are, I think, are, are going to complement, only accelerate, help. I, I, those things are phenomenal. But I wouldn't replace those things. Like no, sleep's the biggest one. And, and I, you know, it's one of the things that I think that um, we take a lot, of, a lot of pride on since we've started this show. Like we started the show long before there was obviously sponsors and stuff. And, you know, we, we obviously get, we get paid to talk about products like this, right? Mm -hmm. We have, we have partners in these products that we think are, are awesome, but I don't think we'll ever change our messaging around the, the natural holistic way for you to approach recovery and building muscle it's and just they don't diaphragm. replace it they don't you get bad sleep you it's can not do all the, that they're stuff. not the big rocks exactly mm -hmm. uh, but if you are taking care of the big rocks and you have the financial means <clears throat> to invest in some of these things i think they're they're awesome now now one thing that we need to say too is if you're play, playing this game where you're like how can i increase my recovery cap capacity i in some circumstances i get it let's say you're in the military mm -hmm. or you're playing a sport and you you have to train at a particular intensity, and they're requiring you to do a certain amount of practices. Right. This makes sense, but for people who work out on their own, oftentimes when they're like, "How can I increase my workout capacity?" What's that really indicating? You're working out too much or too hard, right? That's oftentimes the problem. It's like, okay, let's back off on the training level. Now, if you're barely working out, you're like, "Why am I not recovering?" I'd look at sleep, I'd look at diet, I'd look at that kind of stuff. But I've had a lot of people tell me that, like. Hey, how can I increase my workout capacity? And we talk about, you know, their sleep and their diet. And then I go, well, let me look at your workout. Oh, you're working out six days a week. Yeah. You know, you're doing 20 sets per body part. That's the problem. Yeah, not the fact really that you're stress management. I yeah. mean, if like there's a multitude of factors of stress in, that that's, you know, in your lifestyle at the moment, like you got to kind of take inventory of that. And if, if a meditation is something that you can incorporate, if there's ways of, um, you know, getting yourself into that parasympathetic state, you know, more effectively then those are good tools to inc yeah. include. And one of the most important things to understand with exercise is that the right dose will get you there the fastest. Yeah. Less than that and more than that will not get you there any faster. And the right dose depends on the context of your life, your fitness level, your health, all those different things, meaning the right dose can change. So aim for the right dose, not the most that you could get away with. Next question is from Kylie Johnson. How much protein is necessary in a fat loss phase for women? Okay, the word is necessary here. So uh, what's necessary would be essential protein intake, meaning you got to eat at least enough protein to meet your essential amino acid requirement because below that and you, you you get sick. You literally need a certain amount of amino acids. Okay, but besides that, okay, let's talk about what's optimal because necessary and optimal are two different things. For most women or most people, optimal is anywhere between about half your body weight to your body weight in grams of protein. So if you weigh 120 pounds, it's anywhere between 60 to 120 grams. If you're 150 pounds, so on. Probably more towards the higher end is what I found to be most successful. Well, they did. They didn't. They do a study on that for like if you were hitting like your you know just your your base amount that your body needs versus going above that like one and a half times or whatever the 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 amount of atrophy that happened. 
Didn't they? Didn't they do a study? Oh, that- it's better off. I mean, you eat, you know, almost a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Of course, this has to be reasonable if you're really obese. Use your lean body mass. But if you do that, you're more likely to lose body fat, less likely to lose muscle. You have more satiety, meaning your appetite is controlled better. Insulin tends to be uh, controlled a little better. Blood sugar controlled better. Um, that's part of the insulin. Um, and it just it tends to work better. Now, this isn't true for everybody. Some people get constipated with too much protein or you know, it doesn't work with their digestion. But generally speaking, higher protein uh, as a percentage of your calories – just works better, especially for fat loss. It's so, especially it's for so fat important. Loss. You have to understand that when when you're in a cut, you're reducing your calories. And if you're also not hitting your protein intake, right? Or have or not, optimizing it. Yeah, or optimizing it. It's one of the fastest ways for you to lose muscle also. Yep. yep. So and and that's not normally somebody's goal. Normally, when somebody wants to lose fat, they don't or, want to lose muscle. Yeah, they don't want to lose muscle. You definitely. I mean, you're going to slow your metabolism down. That that's what makes your the shape that you probably you know, worked for. But you know, they've done. Yeah. Why isn't it like how much uh, carbohydrates is necessary uh, for a phase for fat loss? Yeah, well, carb- aren't we focusing on that? Well, carbohydrates aren't necessary at all. Right. I'm not saying it wouldn't be great to eat them. I think <clears> for better performance, but they're just not a necessary, an uh, you know, macronutrient. Fats. And proteins are essential. I mean, you have to consume them. Uh, but, you know, they've even done studies on sedentary individuals and people who've had, uh, have to, you know, recover from an injury. Higher protein intake, all, all other things being controlled, re, re, uh, results in less muscle loss, in less strength loss. Like if you're sedentary completely, let's say you get injured, you're, in, you're bedridden, you're going to lose some muscle. A higher protein intake, you lose less muscle. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a very valuable macronutrient when you're talking about fat loss and muscle maintenance uh, when it comes to weight loss. So high protein for most people works. Now, if it affects your digestion negatively, you get constipated, you don't feel good, listen to your body, ignore what I'm saying. But probably eight or nine out of 10 people watching this, you're better off with a higher protein intake. Next question is from Cami Cake 21 Egg whites versus whole eggs. Oh, man. Whole eggs. Yeah. All of the eggs. Okay, so there's one benefit to egg whites. It's lower calorie. That's about it, right? All the other benefits go to whole eggs. Like- this, all, this was so I I even went through a kick at doing this for a little bit and it was so popular in the bodybuilding oh, space. Nobody ate whole eggs. And you know what's funny? It was like I remember doing it and actually like just kind of doing it because everybody was doing it and not really like paying attention to like what what the difference was. And then I remember like actually tracking and looking at it and I go, well, that's weird. Okay, yeah, I lose calories, but I also lose half the protein. Yeah. So it's like, and that's one of the hardest things for you to get when you're especially when you're cutting, is enough protein. It's so, the fat because so, because egg whites is pure protein. It's like mm-hmm. a protein shake, right? It's like I know, but you still you still lose. You, there's like seven grams in an egg, and three of it is in the uh, three of it's in the yolk, and four of it's in the white. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. lose almost half the protein in the egg by cutting out the yolks. The, yeah. And, the, and, and, from and what all, we know about dietary cholesterol now, it's like and that there's too. No. Yeah. There's, there's it's a no precursor rest- to testosterone restriction. So yeah. to 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 do that all to save. Uh, 30 calories, I mean, I, I'm better off instead of doing a full cup of rice to do three quarters of a cup of rice or instead Agreed. of throwing yeah. two tablespoons of butter throughout the day, I use well, one tablespoon of butter. I mean, there's... Well, also, egg, the, the yolk is the multivitamin of nature. Right. The, the, the nutrients... The, the egg white has protein. There's very so little like other nutrients. Right? Yeah. The, the yolk is packed full of nutrients and they've done studies. Here's the best part. Now they have studies comparing egg whites to egg yolks uh, uh, excuse me, egg whites to whole eggs. When all of the things are controlled, protein intake and everything, whole eggs results in more muscle gain, results in better protein synthesis. So the whole egg is actually more anabolic than the egg whites. And what's funny is that the bodybuilding, muscle building community pre-1980s, because in the 80s, it was all about low fat. That was what was being preached yeah. uh, to everybody. Before that, nobody ate egg whites Oh, there's it was, whole companies that just focus on egg white, um, uh, still like getting rid of the yolks completely and like pouring just the egg white. Dude, it, they used to promote eating tons of whole eggs as this anabolic muscle building, you know, kind of formula. And it is, I do it and yeah. I notice a big difference. The only thing that I liked, so there's, there is companies that do like the, the pump egg, and I went on this kick for a while when I was competing. What I liked about it was I could add it to anything. It's like flavorless. Mm. So you can literally make a shake with it. That's right. Way that's right. Then, I would, I would, I would take yeah. a shake that was already like a 35, 40 gram shake of protein. Yeah. And then I would, you know, pump like four pumps uh, with another, another 10, 15 grams of egg whites because it would be flavorous and it kind of frosted up. Yeah. So it actually kind of tastes good in a shake or I would squirt it into my oatmeal. 
Mm. And because I wouldn't, you wouldn't taste it. It would mix right in with the oatmeal, no problem, and you wouldn't get any taste. So that way, I bet you will never catch me make eggs and not do the whole egg. The I would only, never cook egg whites. The only person I could see this having any value is the <clears throat> person that is controlling their calories and their macros to such a point that all they want is 30 grams of protein and no other calories. And they want to do it from a food. Yeah, but even then, I, you would, I would yeah. do what I said. I know. I I'm was, just saying, I, if they did everything else, yeah, and I they're know. like... But you, you know. just, I mean, cut cut it somewhere else. Like, the, to your point earlier, the, the best part of the egg is 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 the middle. You, you know? know, I only feed my, my, my 19-month-old son egg yolks. He doesn't even have the whites. Because whites, if you have an, a, an intolerance to eggs, it's mm -hmm. usually to the white, not mm -hmm. to the egg yolk. Because the white... Is, has antibodies. It protects the yolk. So now this isn't true for everybody, but if you have an intolerance to eggs, try egg yolks. Oftentimes it's not a problem. And so, and my son has a little bit of intolerance to egg whites, but not the yolks. So every day for breakfast, the kid has literally three scrambled egg yolks every single morning. Next question is from Chicken Nuggies Pop. What are the pros and cons of double overhand versus mixed grip for deadlifting? Okay, so the, the only pros... With a mixed grip. So mixed grip is where one hand is pronated, one hand is supinated, okay? The only pros to that is you can lift more weight. Yeah. Okay? Because... That's why people do it. Because you can hold on to more weight. Mm -hmm. My grip is stronger when one hand is facing one way and the other way because the barbell has to, doesn't roll out of your hand. It has and to usually go that's the limiting factor once you get up in weight. Yes. So that's the benefit. What's the detriment? It's imbalanced. Yeah. One hand supinated... One hand pronated, I learned this firsthand. I deadlift, I love deadlifting, and I did not want to use wrist wraps, and I wasn't disciplined enough to always alternate which hand was forward, which hand was back. Eventually, I found one favorite, which was this, mm -hmm. and I was strongest that way, so that's how I always did my, my heaviest sets. And I developed an imbalance, uh, and you could see it in my back. And now it's been, I don't know, five years of me doing double overhand hook grip, which I, I can't lift quite as much with that, but hey, I can get pretty there, close. Though. Almost. It's I like, tried for a minute. I couldn't stick with it. It's hard. It's, it's I can't I can't believe you actually caught up to doing that. I remember I still it was when we started the podcast. We you were you were just starting the hook grip and I remember trying to do it with you and I'm like, this fucking hurts. I got about it hurts, it's dude. about I'm about 20, it's 30 pounds off as hell. still. Yeah. It, but it's uh but this is balanced. So if you're gonna use an alternate grip, you gotta make sure you alternate uh between sets. The other con is this supinated arm right here, it's not common, but people can tear their bicep mm -hmm. in this position here because you might want to pull with your arm and then you can see some injuries. But if you're a power lifter, obviously you can't wear wrist wraps. I'd say do it. If you lift on your own, I would say, I don't know, try practicing a hook grip or alternate. But a hook grip is, I mean. That's so if you were to choose one or the other, because I, I remember I had this this dilemma after the fact of like realizing the imbalance that was coming from the double, the, I mean the um, alternate mix, the yeah. mixed grip. Uh Straps or mixed grip? Alternating mixed grip or always no, no, the same? Always the same. Oh, straps. Straps. Yeah, because you do develop an imbalance. You do. Now, you're, you're not going to get as strong of a grip, obviously, right, and right. you're not connecting to the bar the same. Right. But I, like I said, I, I, I had a distinct. Uh, so that's imbalance. what I started doing when you went to hook grip. I couldn't stick to hook grip. What I would do is I would double overhand. Until yeah. I got to a weight where Decide, my grip started to become the limiting mm -hmm. factor. And then if I was trying to get up to like PR type numbers, I would wrap up. I don't know how Olympic, because I do a hook grip, I but I don't do mixed. I can't do it like a weightlifter. <laughs> Weightlifters will put their first two fingers over their thumb. That hurt, that hurt. I can only do one finger, but Olympic lifters can lift massive amounts of weight with a hook grip. And you guys, you know, Lane. Yeah. Lane pulls that way and he's mm -hmm. pulls well, 600 and something pounds that way. Yeah. But I just can't, I, I, I can't do it. And it's not, I guess, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's obviously more balanced, but it's not ideal. It still doesn't feel great. I tried it. It's hard. Yeah. It's really something that, I mean, I wish someone would have introduced it to me very early on. And so I would just got used to it when I was doing like really lightweight, but it was so frustrating for me to try and do it because I was so weak it was the discrepancy was huge. Yeah. The way I would train it was a uh, mixed grip, <clears throat> but I would I would try to pay attention, have my client, okay, right hand forward, and then the next set, okay, left set, hand forward, and just make it equal in terms of volume for both. I think that you're okay. There's no you guys I didn't hear. Did you yeah. say any cons for double overhand? There's no there's no cons. You no. just can't hold as much weight. Yeah. Well, it's, like you get to a certain point where it's that's the first thing that's gonna fail. Right. Yeah, that's that's, that's basically it. But from a muscle balance, like uh unless you're a power lifter competing. Or you're really, really diligent about alternating which hand is forward, which hand is back. Um, I would say go double overhand. See if you could practice your hook grip. That would probably be better. Look, if you like our show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. 
and downloads our, our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.